Hello, welcome back to Freddy in the Shed. We're up in the Radio Shack. I hope you're all doing well. Now, a couple of videos ago, well, for me anyway, I tested a military style, long range PMR type antenna, and it did really, really well. And I've been reading a lot of comments on the videos recently on the non-standard PMR stuff that I do. And it appears that there are quite a few little PMR nets springing up around the country. It's getting really, really popular. A bit like AMCB was back in the sort of late 70s when it was illegal to use an AM radio. No one should have been doing it. And I think that was the appeal, that <laughs> you shouldn't be doing it. And the same things happened for PMR, using non-standard, what I call dark side PMR radios. There's a lot of interest in those radios. And like CB, we shouldn't really be using them on PMR. They're, they're too powerful and they have a removable antenna. But I think that's part of the appeal, being a little bit naughty, doing something that uh, you shouldn't do. And on that basis, I've got in some new PMR radios or dark side PMR radios to test and that's what we're going to be doing on this video we've got this little well quite nice actually little Radtel RT900 Bluetooth which is their latest radio so we'll be having a closer look at this and pro reprogramming it and then we'll do some field testing and we'll do a conclusion at the end so stay tuned hope you enjoy the video anyway as I mentioned, this is the latest radio from Redtail. This is the RT900. It does have Bluetooth, so you can download an app and you can reprogram it from your phone. Currently not fully supported on Chirp, as I'm making this video in early February 2025. There is a beta version available. Myself, I just used the software that's provided on the Redtail website. It's um, an old, oldish looking version of software. There are two types available. There's the one for the 256 channel memories and one for the 512. I chose the 256 and uh, that, that worked for me. It is a little bit an old, clunky looking piece of software. And I will say that it was quite um, selective on which programming cable that I used for the radio. It did not like my Retivest cables, which is unusual. And I had to use just a generic uh, Biofung cable. And once I set the COM port, that worked absolutely fine. Now, I must say it's, it's imperative that if you buy these radios, you must reprogram them. Um, they come with mainly ham radio frequencies or thereabout. Um, you don't want to go and transmitting on the hand bands because that's pirating. Please don't buy these radios and cause trouble on the hand bands. We are going to use them on PMR, but we are sticking to the standard 16 PMR channels. Once I'd got the correct cable, got it talking to the radio, it programmed absolutely no problem. Also, the software did support uh, copy and paste. And once you paste in the first receive frequency, it done all of the rest for me, other than I think it was the um, narrow and wide on the transmit. I wanted mine on narrow, I had to change that. You can also number the channels as well in the software, and it took seconds to program the radio. So yeah, it, it's, it looks a little bit old, but in the actual fact, it works really, really well. Let's get the little radio on the bench and have a closer look at it, because it's quite a nice little thing. Just have a quick look at what you get in a box. Not that you get an awful lot, to be perfectly honest. Comes with quite a well-written manual. Um, no problems with this manual at all. It's very, very clear, very clear English explains all of the functions. Now, of course, a lot of the functions you won't be using because we're just gonna be using it on a PMR. But to go through some of the functions. The radio has a built-in uh, FM broadcast band tuner. That goes from 65 to 108 megahertz. Also has the air band, 108 to 136 AM. The radio has a maximum transmit frequency range up to 520 megahertz. So we're gonna be using a 446, 
which means we're actually within the parameters of the of the radio so there shouldn't be any spurious RF coming out of it it's an 8 watt radio transceiver has three power settings high medium and low I'm not quite sure what they correspond to it doesn't tell you in the instructions has 256 memories has Bluetooth for programming with your phone has voice activated uh, features has all the privacy codes that you'd expect, uh, CTC, SS, and all that. Also has the weather channels built into the radio. Also tuning step rate is adjustable from 2.50K all the way up to 50K. Price, as I'm making this video, for the Bluetooth version, $34 or £27. And I imagine there's a bit of postage on that. Or if you want the non-Bluetooth version, it's uh, one pound less at 26 UK pounds plus postage. So in the, block, in the box, got the transceiver itself, obviously. Nice little protective screen layer there. Oh, there might be another bit on there as well. Double, double protective screen layer. There we go. So I was a little bit over enthusiastic there as I just caught the uh, edge of the screen. So there it is. Standard little mini rubber ducky antenna. No problem with that at all. What else do we get? A wrist lanyard and a plastic belt clip with a metal hinge and a metal spring. That's pretty good for this price point. A USB, a USB-C charging lead for just charging the battery. That will go directly into the battery at the bottom there. Now the radio does have a standard Kenwood style port. I can open it up. So this is what you use for your programming. It doesn't program via the USB-C. It doesn't come with a programming cable included in this. I, th I imagine they'll probably sell you one on the website. And as I had a little bit of trouble finding a cable to work, um, I would recommend maybe purchasing the correct cable. Unless, if like me, you've got a few of them already. <coughs> what else? Oh, there we go. Just a little power adapter there for the five volt uh, USB-C. Has what we call a shaver plug in the UK has got the proper insulation. Um, you would need an adapter obviously for a three pin for that. But it's, it's quite nice that they supply it, but you're gonna use a, a mobile phone charger. Okay, let's clear the bench and then have a closer look at the radio. So straight out of the box, it's a very attractive radio. Has a color backlit screen. You can adjust the timeout time for that from 20 seconds up to three minutes. One thing worth noting, is that when I did reprogram the radio for the 16 channels PMR, it did convert the menu system back to Chinese. It, it was just a simple case of finding that in the menu system and putting it back to English. It also reset all of the key beeps and things like that, so you have to bear that in mind. Keypad um, is illuminated, it's backlit, which is really quite handy. Also, you've got the shortcuts here on the keys. Again, that's... Um, that's that's quite that's quite good and in basic things like channel up and down 12 it does speak to you as well I'll turn the volume up 13 14 15 and then your your VFO and uh, your memories you're going to stick mainly in memories because of the 16 channels frequency mode but you can scan around the handbands there's no harm in listening as long as you don't transmit channel mode and you've got the twin, it's obviously A and B there. You've got the twin transmit and receive frequencies. It's a dual watch radio. Again, we're just sticking with the 16 channels there. It does have a built-in, say, FM radio. And you activate that by this button on the side here. On. It does sound a bit tinny. Um, as far as music goes. I don't know if we'll get anything on the radio. There is a search function. 
Probably won't get anything up here. No. I've got lots of um, lights on in the studio today, so we're not going to get much on the radio. But it is there. It's something that you're probably going to use to listen to the news. Something like that. Now, a couple of things I actually really like about the, about the radio straight away. And the first thing, if we go down the top of the radio here, hopefully we can get this in focus. But you've got two different channel knobs, if you like. You've got one for the volume and the on-off. And then you've got a simple rotating encoder, which just changes the channel. So if I just turn the volume up. 13, 12, 11, 10. And that's really quite useful if you're going to keep the radio on your belt and you're going to use a speaker mic, then you don't have to look at the radio, you can just reach down. 11, and so many radios have ditched that, they've gone for the up and down, either for the volume or normally for the channels. So yeah, quite pleased that they've, quite pleased that they've done that. The rest of the radio is, I say, extremely basic really. Push PTT, rubberized, feels quite nice on the side there. You've got the radio button, then you've got a multi-function button, which if, you should be able to reprogram it. Normally, if you go into Chirp, you can reprogram it. Currently, that's set to the American weather channels, which wouldn't be any good for me. But that's something that might be useful to you. And on this side of the radio, just the Kenwood headphone socket and key mic and also the charging port. On the back, quite a big chunky battery. Um, I think it's 2,200. MAH I believe. So quite a decent sized chunky battery, wrist lanyard strap there. And then on the bottom, just the USB charging port with the LED. So it's pretty basic, but it's very nicely made. And certainly for the money, and bear in mind this is a sort of sub 30 pound radio. I think it looks and handles really, really, really nice. I want to spend a moment to look at the menu operating system of this radio. So I think it's probably its best feature, along with this large keyboard, really nice large keys that are backlit and also have the um, different functions in blue there above the standard functions on the keypad. Very easy to use this radio and the menu system is really good. You just press the OK there. It takes you straight into the squelch, which is something that you'll probably want to adjust from the factory. And then the first one is your step rate. Again, you probably only need to adjust that once. Then the transmit power, which is something that you will need to adjust. And then everything is really accessible in the menu system, the voice activated feature there, your wide and narrow band width. And off it goes, and your key key beeps there, just number eight there in the menu. Some of these systems before, I was buried way, way, way in the in the menu options, and then we come to our memory channels. And there are a lot of options in the menu. I won't lie to you; it goes on to 50. These are your privacy codes that you can adjust. Same same thing there. But no, everything is nice and accessible. The buttons are very nice and large, and very easy to use. Here you can change the channel name. I've got mine as uh, PMR. The Roger Beep on and off voice actor activated feature and things like that. And of course it's your language to the menu system and just press that to get back. So yeah, very impressed. Very impressed with the menu system. And if you're someone that struggles with radio menus, you'll have no trouble operating this radio at all. So here we are then, in our usual perch. Very noisy, because it's been raining again. But we're up on the footbridge, over the bypass. We're about just under one kilometer from the house. Not that far for a five watt radio. Of course, range is subjective to terrain. Very built up here. You will get a lot further if you're out in the open. Also, the receiving radio is at home and it's indoors so you have to take that consideration in mind worth noting that we do have a color screen 
and although it is quite reflective and this isn't a sunny day yeah you, you can see it to be fair I would say that it's quite visible some of these are very hard to see in bright sunshine you might struggle a little bit but that is the price you pay for a color screen so we're just going to do a quick test then back to the uh, radio looking for audio quality more than right yeah, audio check, one, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, audio check, one, two, one, two, three, four. Audio check, on the bridge, at the flyover. Audio, one, two, one, two, audio. Here we are then, we're at the uh, second spot, my regular spot, the rugby field. So we've dropped in height, but we've now got some open space, which the radio will work better. We've added a few more 100 metres, so we're well over the one kilometre mark now, back to the QTH. Shouldn't have any trouble from a 5 watt radio at this distance. Let's give it a call back. Yeah, audio check, 1234, now at... Yeah, audio check, 1234, now at the rugby field. So the rugby field, audio, 121234, audio. Okay, so we've now swapped things around. I'm, I'm transmitting from the TID radio just to test a little Radtel speaker. So hopefully it's coming out nice and clear. I'm holding the TID radio about three inches from my, from my voice speaking in my normal speaking voiced volume. So Mary had a little lamb. Three, four, audio test. One, two, three, four. So conclusion time then, what do I think of this little radio? Well, this is the first Radtel, the RT900 that we've had in the shack, and I'm really impressed with it. I think the build quality is way up there, certainly as good as the competition, and there is a lot of competition in this section. There's loads, dozens now of these little two meter, 70 centimeter ham radios that can be reprogrammed for PMR use. What st this one stands out, I think mainly I, I like the menu system. I think it's very easy to use. I think if you're someone that maybe you feel a little bit overwhelmed by uh, some of the functions and features on other radios that are all buried deep in the menu system, I think this one certainly is, uh, is easier to use. I also like the controls. I do like the extra pot on top or digital encoder if I want to be precise it's not really a pot but it allows you to change the channels without having to press a button and then an up and down button it's just so much so much easier especially on PMR when you're only going to be using 16 16 channels I know some other radios are a little bit more sophisticated and you can scan the airband and, and things like that um, but do you really need that for a PMR no, pro probably not so yeah, I'm, re I'm really impressed. I hope we get some more of these little Radtel radios into the shack. There is, there is a more expensive version um, which covers shortwave and can also receive CB as well. That would be quite interesting if I can uh, get that in. But this one gets the thread in the shed, um, thumbs up, an easy to use, effective, simple little dark side PMR radio. As always, there will be links in the description to the Radtel website if you want to go away and uh, you want to check it out yourself. That's it, that's the end of the video. I'd like to thank you for your view time. I'm still a small channel, I don't get that many views, so thank you for sticking with me. If you just get a moment before you pop off, just give me a thumbs up down below. That helps me and helps the channel. But as always, please, please, please look after each other for me, and of course, I'll catch you all on the next one. Cheers, guys. Fred's in the shed where the magic unfolds. Fred with his trusty CB He's a friend to the lonely On a frequency